Yeah, I know that. Um, I mean, the old saying that you never follow a legend, you let, you know, someone follow the legend, then you follow them. Um, mm. But, you know, it, it really doesn't work that way. I, I think that op when great opportunities come, um, if you believe in yourself, if you believe in your mission, um, you know, this was just that the, you know, these things happen so fast, um, you know, eight days ago, um, I knew Baylor was open, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, five days ago, you know, I talked to, to Mac for the first time. And, and so, you know, you don't, you don't process everything, um, mm -hmm. the same way you would, if you had six months to think about it. Um, so it really came down to the people. I mean, Javon and Don and Paul and Kevin and Mac, like meeting them and sensing who they were and how passionate they were about Baylor and how committed they were um, to whomever at that time they were going to hire. Um, that was what was important to me. It's, it's about having uh, the people that have your back um, because it isn't easy to follow a legend and I'm not Kim and I'm not gonna try to be Kim. Um, and I'm pretty confident in who I am, you know, and so I just have to do me. So that's, that's ultimately the direction I'll go is, is I just have to be the best version of me. Um, and obviously, you know, this administration believed I was the right person for a reason. And so I'm just going to plow forward the way I know how. Yeah, ironically, I, uh, I when it when it oh no I didn't I didn't think there was a chance but I also didn't think there was a chance for me to be the head coach of the Atlanta Dream you know when I first got asked if I was interested in that job you know it was okay well I'll do it because it'll be great experience for me to interview um, mm -hmm. and it, and it happened so organically and I and I felt the same way about this job it happened you know incredibly fast but really organically I wasn't out pounding down anyone's door. You know, this this was a situation where, you know, the search firm reached out to me first and and, you know, it, it really was one day at a time, you know, and, and it wasn't until I met with them on Sunday that I felt like, OK, this could actually be real um, mm -hmm. because I didn't know how many candidates that there were. I didn't know who they were talking to. I don't didn't know what that that pool was going to look like. Um, I just went in and was me, you know, and, and apparently it was good enough. <laughs> it's a little overwhelming for me. It's definitely overwhelming for my family. You know, I've got three teenagers, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, this, this has been a, uh, exciting, um, you know, I was thinking last night about all of it and, and it felt like about 72 hours was compressed into 24 when I started thinking, Oh, that was just yesterday that I signed that that was just right. yesterday. So, right. um, you know, but as much as anything, um, this is all like a part of being involved in any program, but Baylor, obviously with the national recognition, everything's amped up um, a little bit more, but every coach just wants to get to the point where um, you want to promote your program, but you ultimately want to want to build relationships. So for me, the priority is, you know, building relationships with the players, building relationships, you know, with, with staff here, um, getting to know people and just, you know, moving forward in terms of how are we going to do this job and how are we going to do it right? Yeah, I mean, I've been evaluating some of them for three years. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, certainly um, that's that's my off-season job when I was was in the WNBA was to constantly be scouting, constantly be watching. I've seen Baylor in person. Um, I've certainly seen them on TV a lot. Um, and so, I mean, we've known of Melissa and Queen and, and, you know, excited about Moon's breakout season, watching her this past season, I think had she declared, um, you know, she had a legitimate shot to be drafted, tough draft this year to, to make a roster with the new CBA. Um, but, but ultimately, absolutely, I've, I've watched them and will continue to, when I finally have some time to sit down, really dive into their games and, and kind of get to the nuances um, but really, you know, there's a lot of players on this roster that didn't play a ton of minutes. Um, and so, you know, getting them in the gym will be a big part of that as well. I've, I've got teenagers, so I know a week can feel like a month. And, and mm -hmm. I felt like a day was a week. So I'm sure I'm sure the waiting was hard for them. Um, but I think this is a group that was really committed to one another.
um, you know, and committed to seeing the process through. So certainly, you know, these are players I have to re-recruit. These are great players. Um, you know, they have to know, you know, how I'm going to utilize them. They have to know who I am, like where my heart is. And, you know, so this is just a starting point. You know, we did a team zoom on Monday night, but, you know, met with them in person and, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of setting up either have had or setting up individual meetings with all of them. Um, just to kind of dive into like who they are, you know, what's important to them, what they're passionate about, where they want this to go. You know, I mean, some of them obviously see um, the WNBA as a career path and other players may or may not see it that way. So it's, it's getting, uh, meeting them where they're at and, and helping them elevate to where they want to be. Yeah, I mean, certainly I've watched her a ton. Um, you know, she's, you know, we always know when, what birthdays they have because, you know, you know, if they're juniors and can turn 22, you're, you're just always, you know, paying attention to, you know, it was like knowing that Caitlin Clark, um, couldn't come out and Paige Beckers could when she was a junior, you know, like we, we know birth dates when you're, mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. in the pros. So, um, have watched her really, really closely elite athlete, um, really good in space rim runner. You know, I, I think where, you know, her growth is going to be is um, can we really help her grow in terms of her perimeter game? Can we can we truly stretch her to the arc? Can we get her in dribble handoffs? Can we get her in open space where she can drive? You know, can she facilitate? Um, you know, if you look at her statistically, we, we, we want to drive up her assist to turnover ratio. You know, we, we want to make that at least even um, because I think her versatility is what will translate. Uh, the most to the pros. She's obviously not 6'5", so at 6'2", she's an elite athlete, but it'll be important for her to develop her perimeter game, to shoot it, to handle it. Um, you know, people always think that, oh, these players are are power forwards and they're going to translate to threes in the WNBA. That's not usually the case. I mean, look, look at it statistically and traditionally. Um, that's a really hard transition to make. Um, especially when it's a pick and pick and roll league. So you're either a screener or you're someone that comes off ball screens and it's hard, it's hard to flip those two things. So for mm -hmm. her, it's, 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 she's such an amazing athlete, um, that size, um, won't be a huge issue as long as she, we continue to develop her perimeter game. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to obviously bring more of a pro system. Um, you know, we're going to run, uh, you know, my goal will be to lead the league in in total pick and rolls. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we want to play early offense. We want to play in space. Um, and we're certainly going to rim run and post. We're going to utilize great post play. Um, here's the deal. Um, one of the reasons why Baylor has such great post play is because Kim built a dynasty here. She built something where um, that became the identity. She got great post players. And there's only so many players that are six, three and above who, who are really good, you know, mm -hmm. in the country. There's mm -hmm. a lot more five, seven players to choose from. So, you know, the elite play, the elite programs fight over the bigs and everybody else plays small ball. So, you know, ultimately, what would I love to see us do? Be six, five and stretch the floor from the arc, be six, five and and rim run and post, be six five and screen and roll and, and finish at the rim. Um, we wanna re recruit elite post players, um, you know, and we, we wanna open the floor, we wanna open the game. We'll still play some high-low basketball, but I'm not suggesting that that is gonna be who we are. Um, but mm. we will get our post player touches. And if our best players are post players, I'm smart enough to get them the ball um, where they can score efficiently and effectively. I mean, I certainly, um, the beauty of Baylor is, is you can go coast to coast. It's a private school. Um, it has the notoriety, um, but Texas will be a priority, um, without question. Um, and, and, and I understand, look, I was at Arkansas, um, you know, when I was at Arkansas, uh, Baylor and A&M and Texas fought over the best Texas players. And then, Arkansas and Oklahoma, you know, went in there and, and fought for that next tier a lot of times. And so I'm, I'm excited to fight for the top Texas players. I mean, it, really, I mean, I, I certainly have connections with Texas AAU coaches, but I'm, I'm going to hire a staff that understands Texas, um, that has relationships that will continue to relationship build. And, you know, I, I know, 
you know, there, there are people across Texas that are UT people and I know there are BU people and we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go after the best of the best and, you know, make them say no.